a student or a family or uh, someone who really took advantage of the school and what it has to offer? The person who comes to mind, comes straight to mind, is probably Martin. He was actually, he, got, he came around here for my son's birthday actually recently. He left the school this last year. He's been in the school, I think he must be about, he's sort of 19, 20 now, I think. He came to the school as a child and he's actually got a thing where basically the two from the two sides of his brain, they don't connect properly. Mm. And so his processing speed was very, very slow. Very similar to my own children um, here in the Netherlands. As soon as you don't fit with the right stream, you're, you know, you're not behaving developmentally the same as everybody else in your age and stage and so on. And they were looking at special schools and so on. And somehow they sort of decided that wasn't the route they wanted to go. And they ended up at the Raumta. I think this was, he was would have been primary school age at the time. So he's been there a long time now. Basically, because he had a slow processing speed, he couldn't attend regular education. You know, he was, he was kind of, you know, basically written off. What we've seen over, you know, I've only been there a year, but, and, you know, he was leaving this. The person I knew as the, in the school, he was, he was incredibly well-dressed. Very, very well presented, um, very active socially in school, very well liked. In a sense, he was he was quite and probably quite a shy, quiet sort of student, but at the same time, obviously carried himself well and had a lot of confidence. What I could see was he we, they did a thing when he left, um, which they do for all students, a sort of graduation event, you might say, where they get a book and everyone sits around and they talk about what they've done in the school and and people get a chance talk about how this person has affected them in their lives and so on. And it was, I was in tears. I think probably most of, most of us were in tears. Most of the adults around the room were in tears because it was so clear. It could so easily have been a case where he would have been, you know, basically in a school where he didn't really, was a bit of a nobody and he would have been a bit slow and he wouldn't really have been anybody. In the rounder, he had a chance to really, to become a, a rounded human being you know he's obviously quite bright in in he's not he's certainly not stupid he's got a great sense of humor you know and maybe in certain situations he, he his brain takes a bit longer to work things out but other than that he's pretty great you know he's a, mm. he's, a he's a decent human being and he, he will be a productive human being later on in life and he has he's decided i think he's got a part-time job in the supermarket at the moment he hasn't decided what he wants to do with himself yet but that's also fine. He's got a good social structure. He's got a good communal structure around him. He's okay. He's, he's, you know, he's capable of going and working and finding a job. And if he, when he's decided what he wants to do, he can go and study if he wants to. And yeah. he's, he knows who he is. Where neurologically they might say, oh well, you know, he's not going to be the same as everybody else. Well, actually, mm -hmm. who is? This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg. <laughs>